So I, I drink a decent number of interesting beers, but I gotta say, one that is finished on marshmallows? That's a first. Hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be drinking the Cold Chocolate by Matchless Brewing, Matchless Brewing of Tumwater, Washington. I purchased this from their brewery, little brew pub thing. Um, it is an imperial stout and it is conditioned on chocolate and marshmallow. It's an imperial milk stout. Um, and it is finished on chocolate and marshmallow, which, okay, chocolate, sure. Milk stouts, chocolate, chocolate milk. You know, there's plenty of chocolate stouts and milk stouts and chocolate milk stouts and stouts that use real chocolate and stouts that just evoke chocolate flavors from their use of ingredients. But marshmallow? I mean, yeah, that, when, when you go into food and desserts, those flavors, they belong together. But in a beer? Well, let's find out, I suppose. To the nose, there is a a very sweet uh, milk stout, um, but not thick. It's not like syrupy sweet. It's kind of more of a thinly sweet, like if you put sugar into the milk. There's also maybe a, not a honey. There is some, some thicker sweetness that's kind of riding along there. It's an interesting flavor. I would say it reminds me of licorice, but not like black licorice. It reminds me of, um, I don't know, it, it's an interesting flavor. And I suppose marshmallows kind of have a smell. I mean, when you're making homemade marshmallows, it's egg whites and sugar and something. And you, you let it dry, you bake it at a really low temperature and, and it produces marshmallows. And they do have a kind of a distinct flavor. I'm not going to say that I smell marshmallow in here right off the bat. It smells inviting. There are no off flavors. There are no flavors that don't work well together. It's a consistent um, and, and good smelling beer. There's perhaps a baked quality to it. I don't know. I, I've puzzled over this. This is my uh, second, third can of this. Third can of this. And I still haven't really put a name <laughs> to what I'm smelling. It just smells good. It smells tasty, but it does smell different from an Imperial Milk Stout. Just put it that way. Hmm. Okay, and when you drink it. So you get the roasty on the bottom. That kind of fades in over the first two, three, five seconds of the beer and it, it kind of starts as, a, as a, a dark coffee and then fades to a dark chocolate, like an 80 or a 95 percent, um, 85 or 90 percent dark chocolate, super dark. Uh, but then over the top of that is all sorts of interestingness. Kids are playing outside. Over the top of that is um, kind of a, a milk chocolate, like a chocolate syrup almost, a good chocolate syrup. And then there's just the slightest hint of marshmallow, and it belongs, which is good. I mean, that's what they're going for, right? There's the molasses in here. It's definitely, it is a recognizable stout, and that's a good thing. It's a good, it's a recognizable good stout. Without the chocolate, without the, the marshmallows, this would be a very good beer, like a, a very good stout. The worry is that as you're using adjuncts, that is things other than uh, water, yeast, malts, and hops to make your beer, the worry is that you'll get these flavors that are integrated in ways they don't connect and belong. Thankfully, that is not the case here. While you do taste them in an adjunct type of flavor, as in they clearly, these chocolate and and marshmallow flavors clearly don't come from the water or the malt or the yeast or the hop, they're still integrated very well. They aren't shouting too loud. They're not untraceable. They're not, you know, playing off in left field something. 
They belong. They're there. They're integrated in. They are balanced nicely. And it works to produce a very, very tasty beer that actually drinks really well across the temperature spectrum. Spectrum. There's definitely points when you first drink it like cold out of the can, it'll taste almost like a, like a nitro stout. You know, nitro kind of tends to um, depress a lot of the flavors. It, it smooths things out and cools things down and, and um, just makes it not taste dilute, but, uh, but more subtle. So it has kind of that compressed, kind of subtle character when it's cold. But as it warms up, it does kind of war bloom and more of these flavors open up. And as it warms up to say room temperature, it's gonna approach uh, places where the marshmallow and the chocolate are, are really, really present and strong, but still not in bad ways. So it's a good thing, it's a, it's a win on their part. It's definitely a very interesting beer to try especially if you like stouts, but not only. Because the use of the real chocolate and the marshmallows in there give this beer a different, a different character. Just, you know, it's adjacent to the stout. And, and so it might, be, it might appeal to someone who doesn't prefer the deep, dark, roasty imperial stouts. Um, I mean, milk stouts in general are sweeter, uh, and so they, they often have broader appeal to people who aren't stout fiends um, but this is just a, a good variation on that and I like it for that it's a good beer it's a very tasty beer it's a beer I enjoy um, they also make a peppermint variant which uses like real peppermint oil okay anyways this is Matthew I've been chewing the brew <laughs> drinking matchless brewings cold chocolate a beer made with marshmallows. <laughs> and I'll catch y'all on the flip side.